Hey guys, welcome to Transformation Church Online. We are so excited that it is Easter. And so we're celebrating with you. My name is Brad Livingston and I am the lead pastor of Transformation Church. And man, we are so pumped. Uh, and uh, although we're not doing Easter the way we would usually do Easter because of the same thing that's affecting each one of our lives, which is COVID-19, we are excited that you are with us and we're excited that we get to bring to you this message. And so I pray that you're with your family and uh, we have genuinely been praying for you um, every day. So our staff, myself, uh, my family, me and my wife, we've been praying for you every day. And so we are excited uh, to be able to come to you with this message. And we just want to bring this Easter message uh, to you about this abundant life, this beautiful life that we believe God has for you, for every person. And I'm not necessarily saying a rich life. I'm talking about an abundant life, a life full of purpose and passion and zeal, uh, a life that, of fulfillment where you know what you were born to do and, and, and such a, a great opportunity to impact other people's lives. Once you know what you were built for, then you can start helping other people realize what they were built for. And it's this life that I know that God has for you. And so uh, I want to take just a second and say, if you're new, if you're new at Transformation Church, if you've just started watching watching us over the last few weeks, if this is your very first Sunday, I would love it if you would do me a huge favor. Our team is dropping a link in the comments right now. Uh, so you can look below uh, and you'll see some links for a connect card. If you're on the church online platform on our website, you can look above, you'll see uh, a connect button there and you can click that. And we would love to know who you are, know uh, what you're doing in your life, where you're at, where you're coming from. So we would love to connect with you in a powerful way. And so uh, if you would fill out that connect card, we would appreciate it. And we just want to say thank you for being with us. And so we want to jump straight into our Easter online experience. And so Romans 8, 11 says this. It says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, here's the thing, lives in you, inside of you. So when we talk about this life that God has for you, Listen, the Spirit of God, for those of us that are believers and for those of us that are going to say yes to giving our life to Jesus, that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it lives in you. And then it goes on to say this. It says, and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies. That means he's ready to bring life to you right now. He's ready to speak purpose. He's ready to give fulfillment. He's ready to bring a life to you right now by the same Spirit that's living within you. And so we see that God wants to do this amazing, amazing thing in your life. And we believe that it's true. Chris Hodges, uh, one of our pastor friends says it like this, the resurrection of Jesus gives you the power to close the gap between the life you are living and the life you could live. Between the life you are living, listen, the resurrection of Jesus. That's what's so great about Easter. That's what's so awesome about this day that we're celebrating is when Jesus rose from the, rose from the grave, he rose from the dead. He didn't just do that for himself. He did, and he didn't just do that for our eternity. He did that for a life he wants us to be living. Not the one we have, but the one we could have. And so I'm here to kick this off, and I just have a few minutes to try to show you today how God wants you to tackle this life with purpose and power and fulfillment. And so you may say, yeah, but Brad, you know, there's different people in the Bible. They don't, you know, those aren't real people or those aren't people like me. I'm, I'm, I'm just different. I'm, I'm just broken. I, I've got issues. Well, there's some people in the Bible, but we'll show you a couple just to prove to you that it's real. Check out Paul in 2 Corinthians. He says this, we don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad. We didn't think we were going to make it. In other words, he's saying, I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to get it twisted. Listen, we didn't know if we were going to make it. Paul in the Bible is saying, things got hard. And I know for some of you, that's where you're at right now. Things got hard. Things are hard. Things are difficult right now. But don't think that that is what is deciding what your future looks like, right? Because it goes on to say like this, we felt like we'd been sent to death row that it was all over for us. Ever been there, right? As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened, right? He goes on to say this, instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's, check this out, the God who raises the dead. 
In other words, he brings life into lifeless places, right? But I'll show you one more. This guy's name is Abraham. That's what they're talking about in Romans 4. He says it like this. This is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. It's talking about Abraham, right? And he goes on to say this. This is the promise that Abraham had. This happened because Abraham believed. Well, who did he believe in? In the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. And maybe in your life right now, that's where you're at. You're saying, man, I need God to, to bring a new thing into my life. Well, hear me for a second. My entire goal for today, everything that I'm aiming to accomplish in the next few minutes is to show you how God can bring life into lifeless situations. He can bring newness into things that seem dead and old and stale. In all honesty, for areas of your life where you feel like they are disqualified, like you feel like God doesn't have anything for you, like you couldn't possibly be in a position where God could do something great in your life. Maybe you feel like everything in your life is just done. I'm here to tell you today that God wants to come in and do something so good that he could make your life flipped. Everything that used to be is gone. Now there's a new thing. God wants to flip everything in your life. So how does this happen? Well, we have two stories uh, that run in congruence with each other in the Bible that I want to show you today, right? And so there's these two women in the Bible. One is a girl and one is a woman. And they happen in Mark chapter 5. And as Mark chapter 5 is leading us, what happens is Jesus arrives on the shore. Um, and so he's been on a boat. He arrives to the shore. As soon as he gets on the ground, he's surrounded by a mob of people. And as he's surrounded by these people, right, uh, a leader in the city comes up to him, a synagogue leader comes up to him and makes a request. And it says it like this. He pleaded earnestly with Jesus. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him, right? Now, this is where it gets special because as Jesus goes on this journey, right? So he is headed to this leader's house where this little girl is there and she's sick and she's dying. And as he's going, this mob of people is gathered around. There's another woman that hears about Jesus. And, and this woman has been bleeding for years and years and years and years. And so she has been in her cycle for years. And she spent her money on doctors. She spent it on medicine. She's done everything she can to try to get a healing and nothing is working, right? And so she hears that Jesus, the one that heals, is coming to town. And this is where we pick up in Mark chapter 5, 27 through 29. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She's coming up and she's saying, man, I, I just, if I could just get close enough to touch his wardrobe, to touch something on it, if I could just be that close to him, I know I'll get healed. And, and I want you to understand something. What no doctor could do, right? What seemed impossible, what seemed permanent in her body, what seemed like couldn't be fixed, it was the unfixable that was flipped when the power of God touched her body. She's walking. She's trying to figure it out. She's going through life confused. And for many of you, you are right there. You're moving through life. But think confusion has set in. You've prayed every prayer. You've gone to every specialist. You've talked to every friend. You've tried to get hope in every place. But you can't seem to find it. And I'm here to tell you today that a connection with Jesus is where you can find that healing that God has for you. It's where you can find the healing where nothing else gets fixed in your life. It gets fixed when Jesus comes on the scene. My question to you is this, though. What is it in your life that needs to be flipped? Maybe you're, you're dealing with a sickness just like this woman, but man, what else could it be? What other circumstances in your life? Maybe you've got a record. Maybe God has tried to tell you that he wants to do something great with you, and you keep telling God it would be impossible for you to do that. It would be impossible for me to be able to go into ministry. It would be impossible for me to get a clean start. It would be impossible for me to own a house because of all the bad decisions I made in my past. And now uh, I, I can't have the credit or I can't do those things. 
Maybe you're, you need some, you're needing supernatural provision. You're saying it would be impossible for those things to line up in my life. That's just not the way it works. I'm here to tell you that our God is the God of the impossible because he makes impossible things possible. Just like with this woman. She went to every special. She did everything. And my question for you is what is it in your life that you need to be flipped? What is it that looks this way? But you're going to say, you know what? I'm putting my faith in God that when he comes in, it's going to look this way. I remember uh, one of my family members was, uh, he had gone through a very rough teenage years, uh, much like myself. And because of that, it was hard for him to land certain positions uh, as far as jobs go. And we were in a 21 day fast. I'll never forget it. We were fasting for 21 days in January. And as we were fasting, uh, he came up to my dad and my dad uh, said, what is it that you're believing for? What miracle? And he listed not just getting a job, but he listed a job that was going to give him uh, a vehicle. They were going to pay for his gas. They were going to give him more money than he was making at his other job. I mean, he listed a number of things. And I'll be honest with you, some of them seemed kind of impossible. Like some of them were like, I don't know. Like, you know, you're, you're, maybe just start with one of these. But he went for all of them. He made a whole list. And what seemed impossible because of previous circumstances, God said, that's where I'll step in and make things possible. And guess what? He got the job, but he didn't just get the job. Everything on his list, the vehicle, the gas card, the job, the pay, everything, the, the, the bonuses, the insurance, everything he said he wanted for him and his family, God showed up and gave it to him when he didn't deserve it. And quite frankly, because of his life, everyone else said it couldn't happen. And what is it in your life right now that you or other people are saying can't happen because of something else? I'm here to tell you that God can bring life into those situations that seem impossible. He can flip what seems like can't happen. And so we see those things happening. As a matter of fact, we put it like this. Jesus can flip your brokenness and he can bring healing. Jesus can flip your brokenness and he can bring healing. When he comes on the scene, those things that seem like can't be fixed, those things that seem impossible, those things that seem like are too far gone, those things that seem too damaged, maybe someone hurt you, maybe someone broke you, maybe someone came into your life and they created damage and, and you just say, you know what, this is just the way I'm going to be. You don't have to be that when Jesus comes on the scene for you. A connection with the Savior who is here for you, I'm telling you, can bring healing into very broken situations. And all it takes is someone that's willing to go after him to go after their healing. Walk away from your brokenness and walk towards your healing. So we continue in the story, Mark, Mark 5, verse 30. And after the woman touches him, at once Jesus realized that power, say power. All right, try it again, say power. Very good. When he realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now, can I tell you something? He's in a crowd. He's surrounded by people. The disciples look at him like, Jesus, there's 150 people close to you right now. Everyone touched your clothes, right? But what Jesus was asking wasn't who touched me. He was really asking who just received something from me. You see, there's a lot of people that want Jesus so that they can navigate life better. They want Jesus just so that they can have a yacht or a bigger house or a bigger bank account. I'm here to tell you, he doesn't promise any of those things. But for those of us that are going after Jesus just so that we can touch Jesus, and maybe we're going to get something as a byproduct, but we're saying we're going after him. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus shows up in miraculous ways for them. And the power of God can flow into you if you're looking to connect to him. I'm going to say that again. The power of God can come and flow into you if you're looking to connect to him. And so the disciples are saying, everybody touched you. Why? Well, here's what I want you to know. Jesus looks for the situations that everyone says is too far gone to show his power. He doesn't just know they exist. Listen to me. Jesus looks for those situations to show his power. Hear me for a second. If you are in a position right now, where you feel like things are too far gone for you, Jesus is looking for you to show his power. He's looking for your situation. So 
He keeps on going. Mark 5, 35, we pick up. And while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and says, your daughter is dead. Now keep in mind, remember, Jesus met the man at the boat, is on his way to meet this little girl. And on the way, the woman touches him. She gets healed. But Jesus turns around and he stops. And because Jesus stopped with the woman, the little girl didn't get her healing in time. And that would be tragic in the face of anything else. But Jesus comes on the scene for so much more than that. And so Jesus steps in and the people come to him. They're saying, it's too late. If you look at the scripture in Mark chapter five, they're like, don't bother him anymore. It's too late. She's gone. Hope is gone. Right. She, he, the, the people come to her and, and, and I want you to understand something. Jairus comes to Jesus and he was hoping in Jesus. Jesus found him there. Jesus was going to perform the miracle. Everything was lining up. He went from hopeless to hopeful because Jesus is on the scene. He goes to meet Jesus. He gets to him. He asks Jesus to come. Jesus says, yes, everything's looking right. Then he gets word that his daughter died because Jesus took too long with someone else. That's incredibly frustrating. And for some of us, we find ourselves in those same places, don't we? Where we're sitting there and we're going, God, I, I, I came to you. I found you. You found me. We connected. I prayed to you. I felt like you gave me a promise that you were going to do this thing. Now I feel like you let me down. I see Billy or Susie. I, feel, I see my friend. I see even people that I'm acquainted with. I see them getting blessed. I see them getting the things they were going after. But I don't feel like you showed up for me that way. Well, guess what? God doesn't have to do things in our time to do things. Because guess what? It may have seemed too late, but it might not have been. We go back to Mark 5, 36. Overhearing what they said. Jesus told him, don't be afraid. And you remember what we talked about with Paul? Remember what we talked about with Abraham? They believed in the God that raised the dead. Jesus says those same words, just believe. Just believe. That's what he tells them. So Jesus goes to Jairus' house anyways. The girl is dead, but Jesus goes anyways. Here's the reason. Jesus loves showing people what he can do in hopeless situations. Here's the way we put it. Jesus loves, or Jesus looks for the people that everyone says is too far gone to show his power. The same way Jesus looks for situations that people think are too far gone, he also looks for the people that everyone says is too far gone. 1 Corinthians 1 27 says it like this. Instead, God chose the things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. In other words, the people in your life that think they're smart, they think they're wise, they think they've got it together, and they say you can't do X, Y, and Z because of X, Y, and Z. They say you can't possibly find a husband because you've already done all these things. You've got these children. You've got this. I'm going to tell you that God can come on the scene. He can bring life. He can do what everyone else considers foolish. They think they're wise, but he can make them look foolish because he'll do the things that no one else says is possible. I'm here to tell you that if you think you can't find that job, you think you can't find that employment, you think you can't live the life of fulfillment that God has for you, I'm here to tell you today, he'll take the thing that the world considers foolish. People call you a fool because you're believing that God will give you that job. People will call you a fool because you believe that God will give you the supernatural provision. He'll pay. He'll bring life. He'll heal doctors doctor's notes. He'll do all the things. People think it's foolish, but who, who is God trying to prove right? He'll show the ones that think they're wise how foolish they are. And he chose the things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God can do amazing things with your life. All you do is go after Jesus. You see, in Mark 5, 41 through 42, Jesus walks into the little girl's home. And holding her hand, he said to her, little girl, get up. And the girl immediately stood up and walked around. You see, Jesus can flip the dead areas of your world and he can bring life. The things that seem dead, the things that seem impossible, the things that seem like they are 
gone. The things that seem like they can't happen. It seems like your marriage is over. It seems like your relationship is destroyed. It seems like you'll never beat this drug addiction. It feels like you'll never overcome this alcohol. It seems like everything in your life is done. It seems like the relationships that you have broken because of your bondages and your addiction, it seems like all of those things are shot. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus can bring life into all of those areas. He can flip the dead areas of your world and bring life into them. So what is it that you've given up on? What is it that God has said can't happen? Maybe it's your spiritual life. Maybe you think that Jesus has disqualified you. Maybe you think you've jacked it up way too bad. And Jesus, there's no way he would want you on his team. I'm here to tell you that he absolutely can and he absolutely does. So what do we do? We go after Jesus who can flip the dead areas of your world and bring life. He wants to bring life to you. And so is there some area of your life that you've just decided Jesus can't bring life into that? It's over with. Because I'm here to tell you, it's not only that he can, I believe he will. I believe that he wants to do that in your life. Because with Jesus, not even the stinging reality of death keeps its power when he comes on the scene. Jesus flipped the body of the woman who only knew take and take. It only knew empty, empty. It only knew death, death. It only knew destruction. And she was empty of hope. She was empty of finances, empty of ideas, empty of energy, empty of joy, empty of happiness, empty of life. No friends, no help, no relationships. And Jesus flipped into the fullness of life. Jesus flipped the death of the little girl that only knew take, take, take. Because death doesn't give back. But she was gone. The body was hollow. The tears had started. Grief had been triggered. The parents were spent. They were done. Their emotions had already got the best of them. Grief had already set in. Sorrow had already swallowed up their hearts. But Jesus flipped death in reverse. And the thing that only knew take Jesus spoke to death and said, I want you to give life back. And immediately life came back into the girl. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus can bring life into things that seem like they are too far gone for you. He's that good in our lives. But that wouldn't be the last time Jesus flipped death in reverse. You see, in Mark 16, 56, he says this. He had died on the cross. He had went and he was three days in the tomb. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. They went to go see Jesus. But all they see is this guy sitting in the white robe. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He says, he has risen. He is not here. You see, Jesus raised himself from the dead. Because I want you to understand something. When Jesus is on the scene, even death works backwards. When Jesus is on the scene, even death goes in reverse. I'm here to tell you today that wherever you are in your life, whatever you're going through, Jesus is here for you. We have a video of a young lady in our church that went through some very difficult seasons. And we want to show you just her story real quick to show you how God can take someone and move them into a brand new place. He could flip what they're going through. My name is Dawn Hoffman and I'm from Pensacola, Florida. When I was a young girl, my real dad molested me. I didn't talk to him for a long, long time. And then when I was 18 years old, he came back into my life and he wanted to talk to me. I wanted to forgive him. Um, and I was supposed to see him a couple, a couple weeks, you know, after we talked on the phone, um, I got a call that he was killed. I never got to tell him I forgive him. I don't know, like, I was so angry with myself and I went to my dad's grave, um, at the, um, Brankus Cemetery and I talked to my dad for like three hours let everything go um, and that's that's basically that's where my starting point was and then I could you know move forward with God so I met a friend he took me to um, the candlelight ceremony um, last year 
and um, God spoke to me when Pastor Brad was on the stage and he said it's time. So that's when I decided to um, give my life to the Lord. This church is just, you're, you could be yourself. You could wear holy jeans. You could wear whatever you want to wear. And I mean, and everybody accepts you. And I just, it's just amazing. Being on the greeters team is amazing. I love, I love people. And I knew that that was my calling. Um, and I just, when everybody walks in the door, I'm just all, you know, hey, I mean, I'm excited for them to experience what I've experienced. Everybody's impacted me. I love, I love coming to TC, but it's actually, it's, it's um, charity. And the women that are on the greeters team, like if I have a problem or if I need to talk to somebody, you know, all I have to do is call somebody. Now I just love me, you know, finally. I'm the person that I've been wanting to be for a long, long time. And I'm, I'm ready to go forward. I'm ready for my next step. How powerful is that? Dawn's story is such an amazing example of how God can come in and flip your life. Doesn't matter what you've been through. Man, those things are real, but God is bigger than anything you're going through. He's bigger than any area of your life that seems like it's unhealable, like the woman. Any area of your life that seems dead, like the young girl. God can come in and heal. He can reverse. He can bring life. He can overcome death. He can do anything in your life. He can come in and bring hope. He can come in and bring joy. He can come in and resolve the issues. He can come in and restore. He can come in and renovate. He can make things better than you ever thought they could be. Why? Because that's the God that we serve. He's that good. And in Revelation 3.20, it shows us that he wants this. He wants that relationship with us. He says, look, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and you open the door, I'll come in we'll share a meal together as friends. And I don't know that he's necessarily literally talking about a meal where we sit down. What he's saying is I'm at your life right now. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. I'm telling you, hey, listen, if you'll open the door and you'll let me in, I'll come in and do something amazing in your life. And for many of you, Jesus is saying that very same thing. Listen, hear me for a second. You don't need more self-help books. You don't need more podcasts to listen to. You don't need more healing. You don't need more doctors. You don't need more illusions that your life is getting better. You don't need that one, all those things. You don't need the TV shows to distract you or the movies to make you feel like you're part of a different life. Hear me for a second. God doesn't want you watching other lives wishing you had them. He wants to give you the fullest life right now. He wants to bring that hope into your life right now. He wants you to have the life that he has destined you for right now. And he's ready to give that to you. John 10.10 10 says this as we close. It says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. I have come that they may have life, eternal life. Jesus has come on the scene that we may have a life that goes beyond this world. But I also pray and come that you would have this life on earth to the full. You may have everything that I've destined you for. Because Jesus can give us so much more. For some of you, you've been looking. You've been wanting fullness. You've been looking for something. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus can bring it to you. Listen, I want you to know Jesus isn't interested in repairing the old you. He's interested in flipping your life so that 2 Corinthians 5, 17 would become true in your life. The Bible says in that, in that scripture, the old is gone and the new has come. And today, if you want Jesus to give you a fresh start, if you're ready for Jesus to give you a new beginning, listen, he went to the cross and he died there. And he spent three days in the tomb and he resurrected after that. And through his perfect life that he lived, no sin, through his innocent death on the cross, where he paid for our sins, and when he resurrected three days later and overcame all of it, he has given us access to the kingdom of God. He's given us access to heaven after this life, but the fullest possible version of this life. And if you're ready for a new start, if you're ready for a brand new beginning, I'm here to tell you today that Jesus is ready to give it to you. And so here's what I wanna do. I wanna invite you 
to pray this prayer with me. That you would agree and say, you know what, I'm ready to give Jesus my life. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he paid for my sins. And I believe he's giving me new life. So I'm gonna invite you to pray this prayer with me. And this prayer doesn't make you saved. Your faith in Jesus is what makes you saved. But this prayer is putting words to the actions of our heart that says, Jesus, I believe in you. So let's pray. Father, we pray right now for every person that's watching. God, as we get ready to pray this prayer and they're gonna repeat after me, I pray that you show them the full life that you have for them. God, I pray that you give them everything that you've destined for them, healing, wholeness, fullness, in Jesus' name. Repeat this prayer after me, guys. Say this, say, dear Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my wrongs. Make me clean. Make me pure. Make me whole. I believe that you died on the cross. I give you my life. Make me brand new. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.